Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Stupid Things Jory Micah Says, episode 36, live on YouTube. Yes, Pugnacious and Contentious is back. Um, actually, really back. I was on vacation all last week, so for those who were expecting to see a False Teacher of the Week episode on Saturday, it wasn't there because I wasn't here. Um, while I was on vacation, went to Kentucky to the Creation Museum and the Ark Encounter, Got an unsolicited episode of that coming up very soon. Um, so look forward to that. We'll get back on the False Teacher of the Week uh, Saturday this week, and we'll get back on schedule with everything. Um, Wednesday, going to have a couple of episodes coming out, maybe even tomorrow, episodes of some stuff coming out. But we are back talking about our good friend, Jory Micah. Stupid things Jory Micah says. This is simply answering a fool according to her folly, and that's the whole premise of this podcast uh, because she's been called to repentance so many times that at this point, the only thing we really can do is uh, Elijah and Mount Carmel and mock her the way that we would mock the prophets of Baal. And again, answering a fool according to her folly, lest she be wise in her own eyes. And so she, I was, I actually took a, a couple of weeks off and seriously, I don't know. I, people may not believe me when I say this. I don't care. Um, but literally praying for her because as I watched this descent of things that she was saying, I was like convinced she was like on the verge of suicide. So I, I kind of, I said what I felt like I had to say and I stepped back. It's been probably two weeks since I've done an episode of this podcast. Uh, she's still alive. Praise God. She still has a chance to repent. Um, and But yet, she's still saying ridiculous stuff. And the only thing I can say about Jory, and I've probably said it before, is she she's a chameleon on social media. She is going to become the color of whatever it is that is trending that day or is trending in her world. Um, on that particular occasion. So again, I was going to do an episode. I, I didn't, I, I don't know, maybe I still will, but like yesterday or today, sometime she posted a bunch of pictures of her dad talked about how, Oh, you did such a good job. I, he wanted 10 kids, but he stopped it too. He, I just wanted all of his attention. You did a good job, daddy. But just a few weeks ago, he was like, he was toxic masculinity, uh, personified. Right, and he was a he was a bad man because he got angry with her sister one time and and got mad face or or something to that effect and and yelled at her sister and so he was just a horrible guy. So again, it's just whatever you know, abuse of you know toxic masculinity. She's gonna throw that stuff out. Dad, you know, recently passed father under the bus, uh, changing the oil down there, um, and then it's you know. LGBTQ, it's socialism, it's CRT, it's whatever. Again, wherever the winds are blowing, this is where Jory is going to be. And today, um, actually over the last week, this was probably a week ago, um, because I saw it while I was on vacation, somebody tagged me um, and was like, hey, Norm, check this. And I'm like, yeah, that'll be my first episode as soon as I get back off of vacation. So here it is, uh, Jory, uh, episode 36. And Jory's talking about, I believe very much in one higher power. I grew up calling him Jesus, but maybe you grew up calling them, her, he, someone else. Um, again, how, how do you get here? Again, you know, we look at the de deconstruction, it's all the rage, you know, deconstructing your faith. And some people think it's an okay thing to do. Other people are like, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, but where, how do you get here? And there's a, there is a path and 
I, I will say usually because I can't go sweeping and say all false teachers end up going down this path, this path, but there is a path and it generally, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, this path starts in this spot where she says, and you'll hear it from all these other people. The Bible is not the word of God. Jesus is the word of God according to the Bible. Okay, yes, let's take this and let's walk with it. So where we begin and where we know we began with Jory is the words of Paul. Can women be pastors? She didn't like that. So the words of Paul have to go away. And so we watched her as we watched her descent into heresy, blasphemy land. We watched this happen. And she, she started again, throwing out the words of Paul because she, she wants to be a pastor. So obviously those words cannot be really the word of God. So that has to go. And at this point, you can no longer say the Bible is inerrant. The Bible is inspired. The Bible is sufficient. The Bible is anything. And so the word of God has to go out. That's gone. And then you generally see them start dropping other things. Again, we've seen it with her, homosexuality, sin, things that the Bible are very clear that are sin are no longer sin because the word of God is no longer the word of God. You know, and it's funny here that we see Jesus is the word of God according to the Bible, but you don't believe the Bible. So why would you even, you've already get, got rid of pretty much everything else. You were red letter. At one point, you owed oh, only the words of Jesus in the Bible, but then you, at some point you have to start throwing those things out as well. Because again, we can't talk about sin. We can't talk about judgment. We can't talk about any of these other things. So now it's just only what you want the Bible to say is what the Bible says. And so again, you have become your own authority on what is, and, and she, you know, she's got an MA in Christian doctrine and history. There are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of scholars out there that tell us that you're wrong, Jory. But your masters is supposed to make us all go, oh, every one of these other people, 2,000 years of biblical scholarship out the window. We're supposed to listen to Jory and Brandon Robertson and every other weird, whacked out, theological, blasphemous anomaly that's out there on TikTok right now because that's all the rage. Because you guys said it, we, we get rid of all this other biblical scholarship. And so why would you even believe Jesus is the word of God? Because you've pretty much thrown out the Bible. But now we see you get to the place. You don't believe that Jesus is the word of God. Because, you know, what he says and her, her the last little tweet that I'm going to talk about. And she asks the question, can you still learn from Jesus even if you don't believe he's the only way? Only if you're, if you're willing to learn from a liar. Because he said he is. And yes, I know the, the video of Brandon Robertson out there on TikTok going, that's not what Jesus was saying. It's exactly what Jesus was saying. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Jesus wasn't saying, join my religion. Brandon, that's what you said in your video. No, he didn't say that. He said, repent and believe that I am the savior, that repentance and faith in me and the sacrificial work that I'm about to do is the only way that you can be forgiven of your sins. And the only way you can make it to heaven. That's what Jesus was saying. He wasn't saying, oh, well, you just try to be like me because you can't. Jesus was the perfect man. None of us can do it. None of us can be like Jesus. That's why we needed Jesus. That's why he went to the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. So he would die and pay the penalty so that we can be forgiven. So if he's not the only way, if you don't believe he's the only way, why would you want to learn from him? Because he's a liar. Again, we come back to the argument, liar, lunatic, or Lord. Those are our options. Those are our only options. There isn't a third. There are a fourth. <laughs> there are three, three kinds of people in the world. Those who can count, those who can't. So there's no fourth option. There really isn't. I know it's the li liar, lunatic, or lord. It's so cliche, but it's really true. So to say, can we learn from Jesus even if we don't believe he's? Why would you want to? 
And obviously the reality is, is that where do we learn about Jesus? The Bible. Well, you've automatically dismissed that except for the parts that you want to believe in, the cherry picked parts that you want to take out and apply to yourself. So literally you have become your own Bible. You become your own authority. You have decided what is and isn't going to be true. So you're just learning from yourself. You're making it all up. That's literally what all of these people are doing. Brandon Robinson, Jory Micah, I'm, and now I'm just going to go blank on all the other, Matthew Vines, Vicki Beeching, um, all of these other people. It's They're just making it up on their own. They, they no longer have a foundation to stand on. They've thrown out the Bible. So the foundation upon which you could possibly stand of any kind of authority is gone. So you have become your own authority. And, you know, I mean, imagine what you will, but Jesus by any other name is not Jesus. <coughs> you can have the, you, you know, just because the name of Jesus is used by the Mormons or anything else does not mean they have the right Jesus. It comes down to what Jesus says about himself, what is revealed about him in the Bible. God incarnate. Yes, he is. He did absolutely claim to be God in the Bible. He made it very clear. Every one of the I am statements that he made, the most clear of those was when the Pharisees were like, hey, you know, you're, you know, they're talking. And he said, and I forget the, the, the full context. There was some argumentation going on. And Jesus said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And the Pharisees went, you're not even 50 years old. How do you know Abraham? <coughs> So obviously the statement he's making is in a sense of knowing Abraham. And he said, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was, I am. An absolute claim to the point that they wanted to kill him. Because he had blasphemed and claimed to be God. So the, the fact that you're not, if people, well, Jesus never claimed to be God, that's a lie. You're literally ignoring absolute essential parts of the scripture because you've Dismiss them. So you have to let those go. Jesus went and paid the penalty for our sin. He died. Romans 3. He ma it makes it very clear that he paid the penalty for our sin. Without sa sacrifice, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Without repentance, there is no salvation. Jesus makes it very clear. So we have to know who he is, and he is the only way to salvation. So again, and I say it over and over and over, and it's basically how I finish up every one of these, every one of these false teachers who is leading people astray on a road to damnation is going to, I'm firmly believing this, is going to have to stand before Jesus and watch as every person that you convinced that you were right and all other biblical scholarship was wrong. You're going to have to stand before Christ and hear those words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Even though they stand there and go, didn't we do these things in your name? The things that Jory and Brandon and Matthew and Vicky and all these other false teachers told us to do, didn't we do these things in your name? And he's going to say, I never knew you. And then you will step up and hear the same thing. Unless... And like I said, there's still time. Every single one of you is still on this side of the dirt. There's still time to repent and put your faith in Christ, in his sacrificial work. Not of your own, not of your own ability. Deny yourself. Quit looking at identifying yourself in your sin. You know, I've never identified myself as a Christian thief. Yeah, I've major shoplifting kid as a kid. Never identify myself as a Christian thief. I'm, well, I'm a Christian thief. I'm a thief, but I'm a, I'm a Christian now. No. So you can't be a gay Christian. Sorry, you can't. You can be a Christian repentant of this, this the temptation or lifestyle, but you cannot, cannot carry any other identity into your relationship with Christ other than Christian. You can't. You just don't. And that's the reality of it. So Jory, Brandon, all you other false teachers out there, there is still time. Repent 
and trust in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Trust in the sacrificial work that he did on the cross. Turn from your sin and follow after him. That's all I got to say about it. So there you go, guys. More episodes coming up tomorrow, the next day, over the next couple of days. I'm going to just be pumping out a couple of uh, catch-up episodes, and then we will catch up with the False Teacher of the Week on Saturday and put everything back on to its uh, right schedule and so on. So thank you for taking the time out to watch. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, uh, hit the notification, get all the stuff, like, comment, uh, you know, questions, comments, snide remarks. I'm down for all that smoke. You know it. I'll take it. And it also makes uh, Mr. Algorithm send my video out to more and more people who might want to see it. So do that. And uh, other than that, uh, thank you again. As always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria.